Is your X1 carbon overheating? Well, if it wasn't, then you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Let's fix it. Almost all X1 carbons are built the same. They have a few Phillips screws on the bottom of the case, and you just want to unscrew them. The screw does not remove itself from the cover, so it stays inside the cover. So once you unscrew them and you hear that click, it means the case is ready to pop off. So we're just gonna, I've already unscrewed these, we're just gonna pop the case off. And this is what we want to focus on. So this is the heatsink. This is what cools the CPU. This is the fan. Sometimes the fan gets clogged with dust and you have to blow it out in order to uh, dissipate the heat. Uh, this is where the heat comes out of. You already know that because you've noticed that your computer is overheating. So let's get started. So first you want to remove the battery. You never want to work on a computer with the battery plugged in, no matter what. So it looks like there's a few screws that hold in this battery. Here, 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 and here. Um, yours might be different, but again, they're all mainly built the same. So what I'm going to do is with one hand, just remove every single screw. Once all the screws are removed, I don't, I'm not going to take the battery out completely. I'm just going to pop it up a little bit, just like that. And I'm just going to put this card underneath it so that it does not make contact with the metal pins. I'm lazy and I don't feel like removing it. So that's what we're going to do. Jesus, what the... So next we're going to focus on the heat sink right here. So we're just going to take off these four... Phillips screws. Again, these screws don't come up, they just unscrew. They stay connected to this bracket. Once we do that, we're going to disconnect the fan right there. Now this is kind of tricky. Um, you want to disconnect with your fingernail or a spudger or something right there. You don't want to pull on these wires like you just saw me doing um, until after that you, you've got a side off because you can rip the wires out. Once you've done that, you want to just lift it up gently like this and it pulls out that way so once we do that we'll just flip it over and you can see that this thing is in desperate need of new thermal paste so this is very old crusty thermal paste which makes sense because this thing was getting to 100 degrees celsius and to clean this we are going to use some rubbing alcohol and some cotton balls so just dampen your cotton ball with some alcohol and start gently scrubbing. Now it won't take much to get the thermal paste off of the CPU. Um, it's, it's, it should just come right apart as you can see there. It turns into like this milky nastiness. What you're gonna do is take another cotton ball and just clean that up afterwards. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now because I only have one hand. Uh, you're gonna do the same with the heatsink. Uh, generally I like to take the heatsink over like a trash barrel because these little silver shavings will get everywhere. And when it's all cleaned up, you should be able to see your reflection in the CPU. Ugh. And next we want to apply some new thermal paste. So I like to use Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. I have a big jug of it here because uh, I'm a repair shop and I use this all the time. But you're probably going to go on Amazon and just get a small syringe because you don't need too much of it. Now there's a billion ways to apply thermal paste and everybody has their own technique and everybody will argue what's right, what's wrong. As long as the CPU is covered, it doesn't matter as long as you don't use too much and not too little. Um, so I would even say that's a little too much. Um, and obviously this is super messy, but it's going to do the job. And it's my computer, so I'm not a perfectionist. If it's a customer's computer, I would make sure to spread it out evenly and make it make sure it's nice and, and beautiful. If your fan looks really dusty, you can actually disassemble it by taking off these four screws. And once you do that, remove this tape right here and the fan will pop right out. I'm not going to do it on mine because it's not dusty enough to warrant that, but you might have dust stuck in between the fan and the heat sink, and that's a huge problem. So I do recommend checking that if you do see um, an accumulation of dust. Again, I'm not going to do it because I don't have any. If you do decide to do that, you want to make sure that you replace this strip right here if uh, the adhesive is loose. So on mine, when I checked it, it looks fine. The adhesive still sticks uh, because what this does is seals the gap between the fan and the heat sink. There's a very small gap right there. So you wanna just make sure that's sealed. Mine ripped a little, but it doesn't make a difference. Um, if you do end up ripping it, feel free to just use electrical tape or captain tape, preferably if you have it, which is this stuff right here. Now we're gonna put the heat sink back on by sliding it in opposite to how we took it off. And you see these little numbers, one, three, two, four. So you wanna screw the heat sink in according to the, the numbers. So this one you're gonna do first, and then this right here, two, and then three and four. You don't have to tighten the hell out of these. Just tighten it until it's tight. If you over tighten it, you will break off those mounts. Let's just plug in the fan, which can get a little tricky. Okay, I got it. So everything's screwed in. My fan is not that dusty, so there's no need to clean it out. However, 
this cover was a little dusty if you look at the back of it. So I'm just gonna clean that out with a toothbrush and then we're gonna reassemble it. Make sure to plug your battery back in. I'm gonna remove that card, push that down until I hear the click and I'm just gonna re-screw in all those screw holes. Battery is reconnected and our cover is dust free. Now this is a tip for laptops in general. Do you see these little notches at the bottom of the cover? So that means this slides in first. This side goes in first. If you put the other side in first and then you try to push down, it'll break those clips. A lot of laptops are like that, especially ThinkPads, so just keep that in mind when you're reassembling it. After we slide it in, we're just gonna press it down just a little till we start hearing some clicks, and then you're just gonna re-screw in all those screws that you took out. So we are screwed in. Let's see if I broke the thing. And we have a logo. Awesome. Now let's temperature test it and see uh, what our temps are now. I teleported to my other bench. Here's the other tip I just wanted to show real quick. Do you see how, how much little space there is for the cool air to come in through the bottom of the laptop? What I usually do is put something underneath the laptop to make this space a little bit bigger so there's just a little more room for cool air to come in before it hits the heat sink. I'll usually take my wallet since it's usually empty and flat and just put it right there. I don't wanna cover the actual vent, so I'm just gonna place it right in the middle, right there. Now this will give it just enough space, just a little more room for the laptop to take in some cold air. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up HW Info and let's see where our temps are. So before, as soon as I started the computer, this was around 90 degrees Celsius. Um, this does have a eighth generation i7, so these things run hot and you saw how small that heat sink was. So let's open up a 4K movie and see what the temps go to. So my benchmark test has been running for about 15 minutes and my temperatures haven't gone past 77 degrees Celsius, whereas before they were around 95. So this has been a successful mission and I hope this helps you if your ThinkPad is overheating.